everyone, I'm Mehmet Tekman and I'm here to talk to you about using Amazon Kindles as a productivity dashboard for your various projects. In a nutshell, you describe your machines, your commands and your schedules in an org mode file and then you just initialize your Kindle devices. These devices are asleep most of the time, but they wake up at scheduled times to retrieve content from the centralized server. Content can be org mode and Emacs base, or it can be from web content, or it can just be static images and web. If you, like me, struggle to keep your life under tabs or find it very hard to separate your work life from your home life, then you, like me, likely need some kind of passive background service that reminds you of where you are and what you are supposed to be doing, even if it's just a sign saying you're at home, relax. Amazon Kindle is perfect for this. In a nutshell, it's a cheap black and white e-ink device that can go for weeks without needing a single charge. Every year, Amazon brings out an incrementally better model which makes their old devices obsolete, and you can find these older models for 5 euros on second-hand websites. Plus, it runs Linux, has Wi-Fi networking, and has a dedicated forum of hackers for getting the most out of the device. Some drawbacks of this is that the device often comes with unwanted bloat. Over the air updates, it phones home to Amazon regularly, it has a secret microphone embedded in the device, and it has a bunch of creepy, seemingly interdependent background processes which, where killing one kind of kills the others, risking that you will break the device. But this is where the community really shines through, since the friendly and not so friendly users and developers from the mobile read forums have pretty much scraped out a good portion of the harmful Amazon scripts from the device. Some of the devices even use Awesome Window Manager, meaning you can really play around with the existing system without having to create your own X11 server. This then empowers users to display whatever they want on the device. One project that really got this going was the Kindle Dash dashboard from Pascal Wittershoven, who really refined a lot of the internal scripts to stabilize the device. However, the project that puts the onus on the device to retrieve the data from somewhere else over the internet, and so you still need to generate the content and place it on the web somewhere. Plus, you need to do this and manage it for every Kindle device that you have. Kindle Sync, however, is an entirely different beast, albeit one that builds off of the works of the aforementioned projects. It assumes that instead of just having one Kindle device around that you wish to repurpose for productivity purposes, that you actually have multiple Kindle devices that you want to manage and configure in tandem. Everything is managed from a dedicated server, or a Raspberry Pi, which distributes jobs to multiple Kindles running on different update timers. These timers are all managed from the server, and all the Kindle device has to do is to wake up, power on the Wi-Fi, receive some media, display the media, and receive a bare-bones RTC sleep request. Then it sleeps for the requested time, consuming no power, whilst displaying the desired media. That is maybe 10 seconds of awake time between each request. Cron does not actually run on the Kindle device itself, simply because it does not reliably work. All of this is handled by the server. With the server client model, it also tries to restrict Amazon access. SSH keys are shared only from the client to the server, but not from the server to the client. So the Kindle cannot connect to the Raspberry Pi without a password. IP table rules are also set so that the Kindle cannot phone home to Amazon and connections are restricted to just the LAN. So I got very curious at one point and decided to see how long a Kindle could last on a single charge in such an arrangement. So that every 15 minutes for 18 hours I tested the device by sending a media item and recording the battery level. The Kindle doesn't seem to report the battery level very continuously but at discrete percentages so that you could end up with a graph that looks like this. Assuming you have half the charge, it uses it once every hour, it will drop by 10% battery in 76 hours, which is roughly 3 days. It's hard to extrapolate with only 3 good summarized data points, of which the number of requests per battery level appear to diminish as shown in the table below. But the final result yields 76 requests with an average loss of 0.5% battery life per request, which is not bad. Assuming you do a request every 2 hours from 8am to 8pm and let it sleep at night, then that's approximately 6 requests a day, which could easily last a device for a month. A sync script does essentially everything, from generating and fetching the media, to initializing all Kindle devices, generating the server cron jobs, log report summaries, editing the config tables, and much more. The media operations are comparatively much more complex and encompass a few media use cases such as fetching the weather, though at the moment only from open weather maps, and retrieving Google Calendar views by week, month agenda, and four day view. You can retrieve org mode data from an Emacs instance on the server, which in my case I produce views for an agenda or a sparse trees of my main projects file. Finally, we have gallery and WAV file, which are static resources which will never change once generated. The idea is that you feed it text and an image location, and it generates a Kindle-compatible image using image magic as a backend for it. In the case of the WAV file, it uses eSpeak on the backend. 
The below is summarized from the help me text in the main casing file, but essentially you need to define your config and the CSV files, which we talk about in the next section, initialize all your Kindle devices, i.e. copy over SSH keys, kill all the unnecessary services and prime them for media collection, and ensure that you have all your static media generated and fetchable. Finally, you then refresh the scheduling on the server. Okay, so this is all good and well, and we now know what the server does and how to probe and inspect it, but how does the server generate much other content? So a lot of the content will be dynamically generated, meaning it cannot be cached, and is likely to change from hour to hour. The media content that is generated here are mostly PNG images and have a timestamp embedded in their file names. The Emacs specific content consists of a few views, namely the org gcal views, org agenda, and org calories, essentially anything that Emacs can display and that you want to capture into an image. Emacs can't, as far as I know, render graphics in a headless way, so what we do instead is run Emacs in a dummy minimal x11 session via xvrb run. From inside, you can take screenshots as you would in a normal desktop environment, but with the benefit that you don't actually need to invoke a desktop or interfere with an existing one. The minimal elist shown here is all that is required to output your desired image from Emacs and configure it for the Kindle environment. On the web side of things, we don't really need to invoke a dummy x11 session because Chromium can run headless and can be controlled via the node library Puppeteer to render dynamic content, focus on regions of the web page, and take snapshots. The static content comprises of two types, images and audio. The content is accessed by a key, in this case Batman, and the content information is given by the extra parameter, which describes either or both an image and text. No, 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 Batman. Okay, so now we have content. How do we schedule this content to appear on our desired machines at desired times? Everything is run via cron. So previously we saw that we only needed tables, machines or CSV, commands or CSV, and multiple time CSV tables for the shell script to work. But Augment does this far easier since you can just have everything in the same file and with the helper minor mode, manage everything from a single org mode document. Here I have four Kindles and their short names. Yes, I even have Kindle hanging outside my door. I have 11 defined commands which represent the views I want to see. And there are four timetables I use, but you can have everything on one if you like. Rows are machine names and columns are corresponding hours at which they run. Trust me, it's easier to configure repeating tasks just by repeating them multiple times because at least this way it's human readable and the script which converts these to a cron job collapses the repeating tasks by itself. The casing script can be called from within the config org file using this convenient use package declaration. All that one needs to do is to configure the environment variables by setting them in this table where you set the repo name, the config directory, where the media shall go, and the server IP, although this can be automatically detected. The package allows you to export your tables by running Ctrl-C, Ctrl-C on them, and allows you to update all the jobs related to each of your clients. You can also initialize clients using this package for either all of them or individual clients. And the package comes with some convenience functions to do this automatically for all tables in the buffer. With this, I want to say a big thank you to Takaaki Ishikawa for his fantastic Org Tree slide presentation package, to Pascal Widdershoven and David Hamp Gonsalves for their fantastic Kindle Dash repositories, for which some of my internal Kindle scripts are derived from. Also, a big thanks to the friendly and not so friendly users and hackers in their mobile read forums. And finally, a big thanks to the Emacs community and the conference organizers. Thank you.